In traditional electric arc steel making, the charge typically consists of 80% scrap and 20% direct reduced iron, with the direct reduced iron derived from coal or natural gas reduction. However, the electric arc furnace can use 100% scrap or 100% direct reduced iron. The charge also contains flux to assist slag formation. The flux is typically quicklime, CaO. The charge is usually preheated before adding to the electric arc furnace. Preheating is by hot flue gases from the previous cycle of electric arc steel making. The roof of the electric arc furnace is removed and the charge is added. This is called the charging phase. A small amount of molten steel, a few tons, remains at the bottom of the furnace from the previous cycle in order to help maintain temperature and melt the charge. The furnace is just partially filled with charge and the roof is replaced. The charge is then melted in stages before more charge is added. Graphite electrodes, typically three of them, arranged in a triangular fashion, are lowered into the furnace through ports in the roof. Electric current, usually three-phase alternating current, hence why three electrodes, is passed through the electrodes creating an arc. The voltage is maintained low initially to avoid damage to the walls and roof of the furnace. The electrodes are lowered further into the furnace, just beneath the surface of the charge. The charge starts to melt at the surface and around the electrodes. This is called the melting phase. The electrodes are lowered further into the furnace to maximum depth, and the voltage is increased. Arc temperature can reach up to 3000 degrees centigrade, and melting continues. Alternating current can lead to cold spots around the furnace, especially between the electrodes at the perimeter of the furnace. Injectors that burn carbonaceous fuel, such as natural gas, located at the sidewall of the furnace, provide additional heating to the cold spots to homogenize temperature. Once the charge is melted, the roof is removed and there is another charging phase, with more charge added, and the melting phase is repeated. Charging and melting phases may be conducted as many times as necessary to achieve the desired tonnage. Latest electric arc furnaces are moving towards single charge designs in order to improve efficiency, but such furnaces have a very high voltage demand to melt all the charge in one shot. Once melting has been achieved with temperature homogenization, oxygen is injected into the melt, either by separate oxygen injectors, an oxygen lance through a port in the roof, or more commonly, through the same injectors used for the burners. Similar to basic oxygen steel making, oxygen combines with impurities originating from the scrap or direct reduced iron, such as silicon, sulfur, phosphorus, aluminium, manganese and calcium. Also similar to basic oxygen steel making, combustion of oxygen in the furnace, in addition to the exothermic nature of the oxidation reactions, also increases temperature. More quicklime, CaO, may be added to control final slag formation before tapping. The oxides combine with calcium in the quicklime to form their respective calcium oxides, which then float on the surface of the liquid steel, constituting molten slag. The combination of scrap and direct reduced iron, derived from coal or natural gas reduction, usually provides a carbon content in the melt of 2-4%. Carbon, therefore, also has to be removed. This is done during oxygen injection by forming carbon dioxide, again similar to basic oxygen steel making. Molten slag floats on top of the molten steel to form a slag blanket. The slag blanket provides thermal insulation to the molten steel beneath. The slag blanket also shields the furnace walls and roof from the electric arc and associated heat to minimize damage. Coke or coal may be injected to the slag blanket. Carbon in the coke or coal reacts to form carbon monoxide. The purpose of this is for the carbon monoxide to cause the slag to foam, which provides additional thermal insulation. However, when using this technique, care needs to be taken to avoid carbon entering the steel. Alloy additions are made to control the steel chemistry. Alloy additions are made beneath the slag blanket. Carbon content of hydrogen-derived direct reduced iron is 0%. 
carbon fines are therefore added, either to the charge or through injectors with alloy additions. Evolved gases, mainly carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, as well as dust particulates, are extracted throughout the process. The associated heat is used for preheating the next charge of scrap and direct reduced iron. Finally, the arc is disabled and the electrodes are raised. Molten slag is tapped off by tilting the furnace. A small amount of slag may remain after tapping. And then the molten steel is tapped off. A small amount of molten steel, a few tons, remain at the bottom of the furnace to help maintain temperature and to melt the next charge.